The first major step in the Subaru engine swap process was finding a good Subaru donor vehicle to pull the engine and wiring from. Now that I had the Subaru donor vehicle acquired, step two now followed, ripping the dash apart to remove the bulkhead wiring harness. The Subaru wiring harness will need to be modified in order for it to be compatible and work smoothly with the Vanigan swap. I don't know anybody that owns six cars and the total value of the, all, them all together doesn't come up to $5,000. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is. That is bad. Oh. <laughs> it can definitely be a daunting task at first, but take your time and have fun with the demolition. All right, here's the dash before I pull everything out. Haven't removed anything yet, but it's going to start changing a lot in here. Super stoked to see what I can do. All right, so I'm just getting started in here. I plucked off these two little guys on the side. This is a 2000 Outback. Um, and then there's another one in that bottom right corner just to screw. I'm, uh, I'm sort of figuring out what's happening, but this thing's getting junked anyway, so I don't know if it's worth salvaging really anything. Um, so I guess it just kind of depends on your situation and what to do. But uh, I might just start ripping stuff out. <laughs> So I just took out all of these random screws here and there. Pretty much just busted that bad boy down. And I'm just kind of going along. Pretty much any screw I see, I just take it out because it's probably gonna have to come out anyway. So that's kind of my tactic right now. It's pretty fun just ripping a random car apart. I'm into it. Well, I just have my head stuck under the uh, glove compartment for a while and I walk outside after being in there for a bit to this man so beautiful pretty sick I'm just gonna throw all that random crap in the back seat because I don't need it anymore super sweet Anyone need any cigarette butts? That's going in the trash. I don't know if I need a label like any of this stuff, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. I'm definitely a beginner when it comes to all of this. All right, after struggling with these stinking safety clips on the airbag harness, I just talked to uh, Jeff from uh, Auto Ventures, and he said I, I can just cut them because you don't need any of that stuff anyway, obviously for the Vanigan. Just like that. Got the airbag out of here, finally. Yet another day here. Uh, just dropped the steering column down. Up underneath here, uh, there's two bolts that are just holding it up. Uh, once you take those out, the steering wheel will drop down. Um, and then hopefully you can access the dash a little bit better. And once you have the steering wheel drop down, you should be able to access a few more wires uh, kind of behind the steering column. This yellow one here is another one of the airbag safety clips. Uh, I'm just going to snip that because I don't need it. And then I don't know what all this other stuff is under here, but I'm slowly disconnecting kind of all these ones dangling down. Um, and hopefully just trying to get more and more stuff disconnected so I can pull this dash out of here. It's really close. All right, over here on the passenger side, once you get this box with both of these connected onto there out you can access the rest of the bolts for the uh, crash bar and then you pretty much just got to go over there do the same thing you got to move a few things out of the way to access those 
and we should be good to go. All right, so here's where the dash is at. This is after, I think, kind of three sessions of going at this. I uh, got the dash fully out, and now I'm pretty much just working on getting this crash bar out of here. Next time I'm here, I'm gonna cut these with a Sawzall, and that should free that open, and I should be able to get to the main cluster under there. Definitely making some good progress. Pretty stoked on it. I brought the big guns here to chop these sections here. Uh, simply because there's a safety bolt down here that is just kind of a pain to get out and I don't really need to do that anyway. So I've heard that it's just easiest to solve all those off and then I'll do both those pillars and then this crash bar should come out from there. Good work. You're welcome. Hey. Whoops. One more piece out. There she is. We got the carpet out of here. I just cut it out because why not? Makes it easier. And now I got the kick, the kick plate for the ECU under here. I'm going to go ahead and remove these 10 millimeter bolts. I'll be able to access the brain of this thing. Oh, yeah, that was pretty anticlimactic. Yeah, what even <laughs> is that? <laughs> Literally breaks my blade. Sick. Pretty close. Oh yeah. She's cut. There are two 10 millimeter bolts under the hood release that I forgot to undo. So make sure you do those before you go ahead and decide to rip your dash bar out like I did. You guys have no idea how good this feels right now. Oh my gosh, the freaking dash bar is out. Ew. We got some sun coming in here, but we have pretty much everything out of here, except for the wiring harness, which is obviously our last step. And finally be able to access and see the whole bulkhead harness here all up through here I can now remove the uh, heater core there and the blower box over here basically what I ended up figuring out is on that dash bar you have to make sure you have all of the bolts out there's like some that are hidden uh, kind of where the main bar goes across the circular part there are kind of some feet and some like legs I guess that come off the come off of that main round bar and I was missing one of them right up under uh, I guess above the steering wheel here column so I had to undo one back here and that finally broke it a little bit free and then it was really stuck on these studs um, but I was able to once I had these cut off and all the things unbolted I was able to pull on that enough that it came off the studs you just had to bend them enough and it and it broke free there she is all right again i was trying to get this ac box out of here and i was missing one bolt on the lower right uh kind of behind that wiring harness so 
if you can't get something out, look for the missing bolt because there's more than likely that there's something there. So I think this thing is ready to come out. <laughs> I'm not cutting a wire, I'm just cutting a little plastic piece that's holding it on. It's always the last stinking ones that give you the biggest trouble. Ah, yeah. AC box is gone. Heck yeah, dude. There she is. It's sunlit glory. Man, we're almost done with this dash. We're so stinking close. I just tried to pull the heater box out and the two fittings here were leaking coolant. I could hear it gurgling. So uh, I just stuffed them with some plastic I had laying around and hopefully that holds it enough for me to at least be able to get the box out of there and then I can just drain the coolant from there. All right, let's try this again without spilling coolant everywhere, hopefully. I don't know if these are cut low enough. For this part, I ended up bending or hammering the lower cutoff part of the crash bar, um, which basically allowed for more room to remove Heck the heater box. Yes. So we're getting really close. I'm feeling really good after today. I definitely took some steps uh, today that I've never really done before in my life. So it was really fun just like having the confidence to do that and just kind of solving problems as I came upon them. So, all right guys, it's been a few days since I've been here, but we are pulling the dang harness out of the engine bay here. I'm just getting everything disconnected. I don't know what that thing is, but this is starting to get loose in here. Pretty much all ripped out. I got the main bulkhead harness pretty much ready to go. I just need to unmount the ECU. All right guys, we just hit a major step. I uh, think I just got everything unplugged from the engine bay here. This end of it, which goes towards ABS, power steering. I forget what that was. I think this is the wiper motor plug. And then this branch off of it over here, got another. ABS, we got a little cruise control. I'm assuming this is a bunch of stuff we don't need. Um, one of the AC connections, this was my horn. And then we got just one of the relays on the firewall. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the majority of it that's connected to the actual engine bay. So now I should get inside, push and pull these things through and we should be set. All right, we finally made it to this point. I am about to pull the harness through the uh, firewall, sort of, trying to do so carefully. This is kind of scary. Gotta get these big old plugs. <laughs> we got it through and now oh, I still need to get that one undone but uh, look at this it's all pretty much disconnected unreal I'm so stoked this is insane is it really heavy <laughs> Wow! Yes. I did it! Cool! <laughs> so sick! <laughs> it's really heavy actually. Really? Well, we did it. Alright, it is now, um, let's see, October 27th today. Um, last weekend I got the uh, whole wiring harness out of here. And now we're going to move on to the kind of the next step. So, uh, there are a couple of things that I forgot, one of them being the um, the alternator wiring harness. I need to get that out of here and get that sent off in my box of goodies. 
and then also this atmospheric pressure sensor i believe this is it over here on the passenger side of the engine bay yeah here's kind of where i'm at with the engine bay just a few more electrical things i need to get out of here and then this thing will be ready to be pulled we're just going to keep plugging away on this stuff and get this harness sent off to auto ventures and keep keep on rolling if you're interested in following this project to completion, stay tuned for the rest of the Vanigan Subaru Swap Series. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them down below. As always, thanks so much for following along, and stay coasting.